Hi everybody, my name is Sam Rachamin and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to varnish this oil painting, a copy after Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. It's called The Bather. It was done in 1808. As you can see, the painting has sunken in at some areas and is glossy at other areas. This is something varnish helps resolve. It unifies the surface of the painting and makes it more complete and protects it in the long run. These are the materials we are going to use. Natural turpentine, the mar varnish, and a flat soft brush. In this case I am using a synthetic one, you can also use a natural soft brush. Make sure the brush is a high quality one so it doesn't leave hairs inside the painting or inside the varnish while putting the varnish on. I'm going to talk about a few topics and also include links to my website and to two other websites that I found very helpful regarding varnishing. But first, some precautions. First of all, lay down the painting so the varnish doesn't drizzle and create drips on the painting. The second is clean the painting from dust and dirt. The third, clean the area around the painting. Fourth, make sure the studio isn't damp or humid for some reason. That might affect different types of varnish in a negative way. And the fifth and maybe most important, open a window or use a vent. Uh, breathing the fumes from the varnish or the turpentine is not healthy. That is the stamp that proves that it is a master copy done in front of the original inside the Louvre Museum. Now, I'm going to clean the painting with a dry brush at first and then add a bit of turpentine to clean more aggressively the dirt that got really stuck to the painting. General information about varnish. Varnish is basically a protective layer for the painting. Varnishing has been around for centuries and painters used all kinds of materials from egg white mixed with sugar to beeswax and even shellac to protect their paintings. In the 20th century, while Impressionism was on the rise and there was a revolt against the academia, academia uh, painters stopped putting varnish on their paintings to give a more matte, dry and rough look to their paintings. I Personally, do not varnish all my paintings, but since this is a master copy, I do feel the need to complete the process that Eng has done. An important point to clarify about oil painting is the fact that it doesn't dry, it goes through a chemical reaction with the oxygen in the atmosphere. In this process of oxidizing, the oil that serves as the vehicle of the pigment crystallizes, becomes hard, and traps the pigment inside it. This creates a film of a two-dimensional surface that is normally just called dry paint. Why is it important to know all this? Well, because varnish separates the atmosphere from the oil paint. If the oil painting hasn't finished oxidizing, the varnished painting will eventually crack or break maybe even ruin the entire painting. In order to prevent this undesirable effect, we need to wait between half a year and a year, and sometimes even more, for, for the oxidation process to be complete. Varnish divides nowadays to two groups, uh, the natural group and the synthetic group. 
I use the natural kind and that's uh, what I'll focus on in this video. Natural varnish comes from trees. Um, it, and it also divides into two subgroups that are two types of raisin. There is basically a hard raisin and a soft raisin. The soft raisin include mastique and damar. Damar is the varnish I'm going to use today. The, varn uh, the, the damar raisin becomes a, a varnish simply by adding turpentine that melts the, the raisin into a, a liquid, um, a glossy liquid. The same thing can happen with mastique, it can also dissolve into turpentine, into a glossy liquid. The hard raisin include copal and amber that do not dissolve into turpentine. Over here you can see I'm wiping off the upper layer of the dust. and cleaning the painting. The hard raisin varnishes are extremely hard and durable against humidity. Um, So this is going to be the before. As you can see, this is the so painting the without the varnish on it. Places that are not reflecting light the same way. After it was cleaned without the dust. Now, when applying the varnish, uh, you want to take just as much as the brush can carry and wipe it off on the side of the jar before bringing it, bringing it on top of the painting. Um, the reason you want to do that is because you don't want to have access of varnish, but you also don't want to have too little. So, I think the best amount you can the the brush can carry is really that amount when you dip the entire brush inside the varnish and then you wipe it off and whatever is left on the brush that's what you use to cover the painting with your first layer when applying it go on one direction and before it dries go in the 90 degrees opposite direction to eliminate any brush strokes here you can see the painting halfway varnished and back to the way to use the brush um, don't go back to areas you've already covered that, that will abrupt the surface of the painting varnish becomes sticky very fast so it's very easy to ruin what you have just did um, I've put between one to three layers of varnish on my paintings depending on how absorbent they are and how glossy I want them to be. Uh, I usually wait a week between each each layer. Once you start varnishing you should Try to finish the entire painting pretty quick, not too fast because you don't want to create air bubbles in the 
on the surface but try to to finish it at, at one go and to have an even layer all over the painting this is the finished painting with the last layer of varnish uh, that's it if you have anything to add or questions or if you are interested in buying a master copy and even subscribing to my workshops in the museums in Paris go to www.samrahamin.com uh, I hope you found this video helpful good luck varnishing and thank you